let me show you how to can split a geometry and how you can uh, run the simulation for the half of the geometry. Okay, um, I assume that you already have a copy of this design. Uh, if you don't have a copy, you can go in the Maxwell um, uh, 3D design here and uh, just click the copy, and then you can click paste and create another a whole design and this design can be like half of that so I will do that here but um, if you uh, have a copy of that, of that you don't need to do that so here I'm creating another uh, magnetoesthetic and um, Now, in order to split the design, you want to make sure that you are not splitting the region, the region that you have, because the region is for simulation and doesn't have to do anything with this, with uh, the model. Um, so to do that, you can either select everything and then deselect the region, like this, by clicking again on that, or you can um, hide the the region by going to the show selections. Sorry, uh, by going to the clicking on the eye, which is the um, active view uh, visibility uh, settings and then you can go here and deselect uh, the region so there is no region anymore to be selected and then if you control A uh, it will select everything but the region and you can see here everything is selected except the region so um, that's the other way you can do that so let's uh, select everything and then you can go to the split uh, here or you can go to the modeler and boolean and then a split and then a split the uh, uh, transformer that we have into two parts one part you will get rid of uh, as it says here delete invalid objects created during the operation and a split into selections and the other part that will remain we will now check uh, we will do the simulations on the split part and in that case we can have half of the values that you're expecting to get but um, these half of values uh, basically means that if you times everything by two you can get the results with that you will reduce your simulation times and uh, you can get faster result uh, especially if you are doing optometric uh, 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 optometric simulations where you're changing the model a lot of times so let's do ahead do that so I'm selecting YZ and I'm not changing anything and pressing OK so if you do that you can see that half of the design is gone right now I'm trying to rotate right now to uh, show you what's going on here. So this is the positive x value here in that side and uh, you can see on the negative side uh, half of the design is basically cut it and split it. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define some um, basically excitations in order to excite the coils or half coils and uh, run the same simulation again. So the process is almost the same as what we had before. I'm pressing F to select the faces and uh, because the region is not selected, it's hidden, so uh, there is no problem me selecting the faces of each coil because the region is not going to bother me each time. Press and uh, hold the control key while you are selecting the faces and right click on that and so uh, select assign uh, excitation and the excitation would be the current um, I'm gonna call uh, the the very first one as always phase A um, however and this is half of the coil so because it's half I have to also say this is inward current and also we have outward current so phase A in for the inward current uh, the value of minus 0.5 um, magnitude of the current and uh, of course it is a standard um, it's like a, a coil and we make sure that the the, the arrow here is uh, pointing inside which is going inside the coil okay so that is done I'm pressing OK for that and uh, as you can see here in the excitations I have three excitations that is going inward the coil. So now I have to also define the outward the coil uh, because the coil is on right now half and the conductor would not work if uh, you're having half of this float. So um, in this case I'm gonna say phase A out 
and uh, the same amount minus uh, 0 0.5 uh, times magnitude sorry uh, it's case sensitive so make sure that the parameters are the same and uh, as you can see I'm swapping the directions to go outward as you can see the red one is on the negative X axis so I'm pressing OK um, sorry oh sorry yeah, I forgot to put the times here so phase a out is created now I'm gonna do the same thing for uh, phase B and phase C so I'm not gonna talk I'm just gonna do it phase B in word outward As you can see, it's that easy to define uh, the half parts. And this is the last uh, excitation to close the loop for the coil C. As you expect, I'm going to change the direction of the current to be at outward. Um, Pressing OK for that, and that will finish the definition of the currents. Now, uh, now let's go and uh, do the post-processing uh, parameters. I'm going to assign the matrix here for that, and uh, you will get a lot of uh, error like this, which will come uh, when the terminals uh, you cannot find. Well, uh, you get this result, this error, when uh, there is uh, Maxwell cannot find a loop, defining on, and depending on how you basically uh, defined the uh, the coils, uh, sometimes Maxwell cannot find the the conduction loop, and because of that, it will give you the error. Um, this error sometimes comes because uh, you forgot uh, a direction to put it in the right direction. So let me double check and see if all the directions is in the right uh, side. I can see here is fine. Directions here are okay. And so uh, one thing you can do is you can right click and uh, go to the conductions, conduction path. and then verify conduction path and as you can see uh, you get this error on uh, oh yes I'm so sorry for that um, before you uh, you go for defining the matrices you have to make sure that your conduction path is uh, facing the region so if you remember we uh, Get it of the region to be able to do the simulations. I'm going to go back and uh, bring back the region, and the region is where you 
uh, run your simulation and start your simulation and when you're uh, putting your excitations um, outside and trying to make a uh, conduction path you want to make sure that the, this side of the region is actually um, connected to the to the region so to do that I'm going to go to uh, the region here and uh, open this one up and double click on the create region and here for the value for the X plus I'm going to change it uh, in order to uh, uh, basically move 400 um, inches in front in, in, in X direction in front of the X and instead of having uh, a padding of 400 for the back X for the negative X you'll have a zero padding for the negative X which makes it to actually match the induction face the, sorry the excitation faces of our half coils so with that we don't have any problems anymore with the uh, uh, excitation when you're going to calculate the matrix so um, you can either go ahead and uh, right click on the faces and say uh, run the calculations or you can go on the parameters and try to assign the matrix one more time and hopefully this time you wouldn't get any um, error um, one thing that I want to also mention here is that you can see that all the, all the coils that we have here or uh, all the excitations that we have here are is inward excitations. That is very smart of Maxwell that is doing that for you because uh, when you have a symmetric design and you, you are basically applying the current from one side and then sinking the current uh, from the other side in order to have this half uh, splitted design working, uh, it will understand that the other half, I mean the sinking part or the outward part is not, uh, is redundant. So it will not show it up here in the matrix. And uh, basically, as uh, a rule of thumb, uh, the, the ANSOF will only show the excitations that are inward the, the conduction path. Uh, and therefore, uh, the inward ones were the one that was through the X axis, as you can see from the figure. And therefore, we can see all half of those excitations. Okay, uh, one uh, thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that all the excitations here are checked, all the sources. So I'm going to make sure that all the sources here are checked. And then I want to go to the post processing and uh, make sure that the number of turns for them are 30. So I will put 30 for all the, sorry, not 230, but 30 for all the. The turns and then uh, same as before I'm going to group them and call this group one for example the phase A uh, with one branches uh, group B uh, phase B with one branches and group C phase C okay so um, now that you did, did that, you are ready for uh, the simulations. I'm going to save it first and get rid of all these uh, uh, messages here. And uh, now we should be okay to run the simulations. The analysis is still there and it's valid. So we don't care. Uh, we copy paste the analysis and it's fine. So uh, first you run a check, make sure everything is fine. It is fine then you would go and analyze everything uh, I will I think it will take too much time so I will pause the video and come back when the analysis is finished now that we uh, finished the simulations we want to check out the results and see if we get the half of the values that we are expected if you go to the simulations and go to post uh, processing uh, you can see that um, you get exactly the half of uh, what you were uh, expected to get um, which was uh, it was it was 14.6 uh, if you remember in the um, the result of the design one and now what we get here is 7.3 which is half of that um, 3 minus 3.4 uh, uh, you know you can see that the results here are pretty close to what you got uh, when you were doing the, the full simulations uh, but everything is half note that the, not only the inductance is half 
but torque, energy, and forces, and everything else is also half. Um, also, we haven't defined any torque or force uh, parameters, but if you were defining before, you could see that the values all are half. So when you're designing at the end, make sure that you are multiplying every values by two. Okay, that is uh, the last uh, thing that I was going to say, one before the last. Uh, the very last thing that I was going to say is um, how you can uh, calculate the, um, the value of the inductance as uh, incremental uh, uh, inductance. One question that one can ask is why do we need to have uh, incremental value of the inductance instead of having the apparent values? Uh, when you have a nonlinear, um, as you saw in the figure, um, when you have a nonlinear um, BH curve uh, material, which in this case is the steel, um, the value of the incremental and apparent are not anymore the same. If you had a linear BH curve material, the value of the incremental and the apparent inductance would be the same. But because it's nonlinear, then the incremental might change a bit. And depending on how much nonlinearity you have or how much intensity of the B you have, you will get a um, way off result with the apparent inductance. So uh, let's go ahead and just use the same old design that we had for the very first time with the apparent inductance and change it to um, the incremental inductance. To do that, you just need to right click on the design and go to the design settings. Um, in the <coughs> excuse me. In the design settings, you go to the ma matrix cal calculations, computations, and uh, instead of apparent, uh, select incremental. Press OK and uh, save everything. Make sure that uh, your systems are still validated and uh, while you are in this uh, new uh, copy make sure that the name is also uh, right because uh, I changed the name for the split view to a split and if you haven't changed that this would not be designed two when you paste it it will be designed three um, anyway so this is the new one and uh, I just changed it to the apparent and now I'm going to run the simulations um, let me finish uh, the simulation and I will come back to you and showing you the result. Okay, now that the simulation is finished, uh, we can go and right click on the results and go on the simulation solution data and look at the result after the post processing values. Um, you can see that the values are uh, pretty much the same in this case. Um, you can see a lot of like a bit of a change here for uh, phase AA um, inductance instead of being 14.6 we have 14.73 and uh, instead of 15 point um, something uh, we have 16 here uh, we have here 6.9 now we have minus 7 so um, basically uh, the result did not change a lot but uh, you can see some changes here that came from the fact that these are the incremental um, inductance, uh, the way that the calculation is done. Um, one last thing to know is that in, in the incremental inductance calculations, um, the way that it will uh, find is basically the inductance would be the, uh, the slope of the flux leakage versus the current. Um, and uh, based on the uh, finding the rho uh, flux divided by rho i, you can get the inductance of whatever um, i k that you want. Um, okay, I hope that this uh, tutorial was um, helpful for you. It was very long. I divided it to three parts, but still, I think it's very long. Um, hope that you uh, answer it answers a lot of questions of yours. If you have any other questions, please let me know and put it as a comment here. You can subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to update the channel and the videos each. Uh, week or two and uh, you will see new topics and uh, new tutorials coming to the channel um, thank you again and uh, good luck with your simulation